2025 is the year that the robo taxi went mainstream. Waymo and Apple are now operating on freeways in San Francisco and Phoenix and Los Angeles, plus an expansion of its service areas. Amazon is officially entering the robo taxi race, and that's because their company Zooks is launching their service to the public for Zooks. the first time ever here in Who's Las that? Vegas. Tesla robo taxis are finally live, but in reality, they're still in demo mode. They only operate during the day in good weather in limited areas with a human monitor riding up front in the passenger seat. In the US, Alphabet's Waymo leads the pack by far. In May, the company said it had already provided over 10 million fully autonomous paid rides. And Waymo investor Tiger oh, Global yeah. estimates that the company on, is now providing 450,000 rides per week. The service operates in the San Francisco Bay Area, Phoenix and Los Angeles, where riders can hail a ride through Waymo's own app. And in Austin and Atlanta, Waymo's partnered with Uber to offer robo-taxi rides exclusively through the ride-hailing app. Okay. In November, Waymo started taking passengers on freeway routes in San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Phoenix, marking an important milestone for the company and making certain trips quicker for passengers. Oh, hey, listen, listen really quickly here. Um, in terms of Waymo, Waymo doesn't really need anyone, right? Um, with all the LiDAR sensors and things like that. It's not just like vision sensors like Tesla does. Um, but yeah, Waymo doesn't really need much, right? So like if you do hire a Waymo, a Waymo like in some of the cities that they just mentioned here, um, it will come to you with, with no one inside of it, right? Um, like, so for example, my Tesla, I, I have to be sitting in the, the driver's seat in order for it to do it um, and or uh, park it somewhere and then you can kind of summon the vehicle to the front of the store that's about the most it can do autonomously at least um, but full self-driving is absolutely spectacular guys next year waymo plans to expand the commercial autonomous taxi service to a number of u.s cities and it's also testing in london and tokyo amazon owned zooks is still pretty far behind waymo but they have made progress taking passengers who are members of the general public not just employees while it is not yet charging for the service Zooks is aiming to start charging next year. In November, Zooks started allowing select San Francisco users to hail its driverless shuttles, which are custom-built vehicles. Oh, well, that is so cool. They offer face-to-face -face seating and don't have pedals or a steering wheel. In September, Zooks launched its free robo-taxi service in Las Vegas, which is taking people around a limited route on the Las Vegas Strip. Zooks is also testing in Seattle, Austin, Atlanta, and DC, but with a fleet of Toyota Highlander SUVs that feature its driverless systems instead of its oh, thrusters. The Zoo needs Tesla. someone in, in there. June, Elon Is that what Musk's you're saying? Automaker launched a robo taxi branded service in Austin. But the cars aren't exactly yeah, me too. driverless. The shuttle. The Tesla robo taxis are 2026 Model Y vehicles mm -hmm. equipped with the company's latest hardware and software. But for now, they include a human safety supervisor either in the front passenger seat or behind the wheel. Yeah. Elon Musk says this might change soon. Yeah, bro. Like within the last like month and a half, I've done like a thousand, like a thousand four hundred self-driven miles, bro. Like, um, I don't even drive anymore. But he's been promising Tesla vehicles are just about ready to be upgraded to self-driving robo taxis for about a decade. We are expecting. No, we're getting close now, though. Have right now, no safety drivers in at least in large parts of Austin by the end of this year. This week, a Tesla exec shared a post on X showing a Tesla Model Y robo taxi apparently driving on public roads in Austin without any people on board. And Musk said that driverless testing in Austin is now underway. Tesla has also launched a ride hailing service in the San Francisco Bay Area, which has a human safety driver in the driver's seat, but the company doesn't have permits required in California to operate an AV service here. Unlike competitors Waymo and Zooks, whose vehicles use a combination of radar, LiDAR, and cameras to navigate, Tesla doesn't. Tesla's it's all vision. Rely mostly on cameras. Yeah. After Tesla started its pilot service in Austin, the company reported to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration that seven collisions had occurred with its fleet. Kind of a rocky start. Mm -hmm. NHTSA told CNBC Tesla is conducting ADS operations with a small number of vehicles with employees present in the vehicle. Musk said the Austin fleet size should increase to about 60 AVs soon, but that's a far cry from the 500 autonomous vehicles Tesla had been aiming for by the end of this year. Tesla also plans to make its purpose-built autonomous taxi, which it calls a cyber cab, next year. It's aiming to start manufacturing cyber cabs, which it designed as two-seaters with no pedals or steering wheels as early mm. as April. Okay. You guys, I think when it comes down to like, like this specific 
idea, the robo taxi thing. Um, I agree with what, with what you just said here in the comments. I want to kind of flush it out a little bit. Um, I would say that um, I think uh, like full self driving specifically is like seven times safer than than you ever touching the steering wheel. Period. Uh, it's seven times safer. Like if you touch it, you're the idiot that's causing some craziness. Um, and I think full self-driving generally gets into issues with other people, right? So for example, um, you would need to get to the point where everyone is full self-driving for everything to basically be perfect, right? Um, and I think that's kind of what's happening, at least. I think that if you want full self-driving to be a thing, autonomous vehicles to be a thing, um, where you no longer have to ever even supervise, basically, uh, then you're going to have to make it so there are no there are no people actually touching the steering wheel on the road, um, because the only times I have to, I think my my rating right now is eighty six percent. So eighty six percent of the fifteen hundred miles that I've done within the last month and a half um, in full self driving have a hundred percent been driven by the AI on the highways, roads, road trips, etc. Um, the only times I've had to stop it, the other part of the eighty six percent is from other people that's it it's it's like it's the other people the, the reason why i have to stop it is because someone is doing something crazy on the road and the ai is looking at it like i don't know what to do because this doesn't this is not predictable this is just strange they're cutting you off um and so these are the only times where i actually have to stop the the full self-driving um it's because of other people so yeah if the roads are definitely made exclusively for it that's great um, but I think other people have to get out of you know, failing to use turn signals. Yeah, all of these things. It's other people's problems, basically. Um, it's not the AI at all. Uh, so if you want this full self-driving to be like a thing permanently and everyone is utilizing it, um, then you're going to have to get everyone out of the car. Like no one touches the steering wheel anymore. Then it'll be perfect. Because again, full self-driving is seven times safer than a human driver. The San Francisco Bay Area can sometimes feel like a high-tech petri dish for autonomous vehicles and robo-taxi services, so we went to check out what Tesla and Waymo are offering. That's also that's also valuable. I'm here at the Milpitas BART stop, and I'm waiting on a Tesla robo-taxi to take me to San Jose International Airport. A ride is available, but it's going to take 30 minutes to get here. Merry Christmas, Dennis. Up. Hi. Here we go. Welcome I, in. I really appreciate it. Hi. The Tesla RoboTaxi is just, it's like a pilot service, so they're not charging very much. I think the app said it was like 10 bucks or something. Well, we're arriving at the airport without incident. The RoboTaxi ride, you know, was uneventful. So I guess that's what you want on your way to the airport during rush hour, right? I'm here at the San Jose International Airport and I've just hailed myself a Waymo. I'm gonna test the local robo taxi service. Oh bro, I've only seen Home Alone. Tesla robo taxi. The Waymo's gonna get here in about 15 minutes, which is a lot better. Um, and I waited almost 40 minutes for that Tesla vehicle, but the Waymo service area is more limited. I think it's because they're truly driverless. So I'm going from the airport to the train station because I don't want to spend nope, no die hard. so much money getting home. Like taking the Waymo from here to San Francisco would probably be upwards of 150 bucks. My Waymo has taken a little longer <laughs> than originally promised. That also happens with like Uber and other ride hail apps. Even There's traffic. Robo taxi app earlier today. Um, but it is going to be here in two minutes. Here it is. You can see my initials on top. That actually is really helpful. As promised, it's a driverless car. Okay, I'm in the last little leg of this uh, robo taxi ride at night from San Jose to Mountain View. And um, the ride was really uneventful, which is a good thing. Of course. Okay, I'm here. I'm gonna switch transportation modes now. A number of startups are also still working on robo-taxi development. Just to name a couple, you have Neuro partnering with the EV maker Lucid and May Mobility partnering with Lyft. Across the Pacific, China has really embraced robo-taxis. Oh yeah, 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 China's going hard. And I mean, China's going super hard with these vehicles, guys. Established clear regulations for autonomous vehicle testing and operations. 
search giant Baidu leads the pack with its Apollo Go robo-taxi service. They are operating in 22 cities already, mostly in China. In Beijing, these self-driving taxis are largely limited to Yidrong. But in other Chinese cities like Wuhan, there are more than 1,000 Apollo Go robo-taxis running Traffic across would town. be like non-existent, and guys. It's already making a profit on each car. Everything's efficient. October 31st, Baidu said it's Apollo I'll tell you a story when we're done. Surpassed 250,000 driverless rides per week. To date, its cars had driven 140 million fully driverless miles. Apollo Go plans to expand internationally to Hong Kong, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and Switzerland. Baidu has also announced Apollo Go is partnering with Lyft to offer autonomous vehicle rides in the UK and Germany starting next year. Meanwhile, Pony AI and WeRide, two other big contenders, are prominent robotaxi players in Asia. WeRide recently struck a partnership with Uber to bring its AVs to Abu Dhabi, another sign that robotaxis are becoming... Yeah, they're going to take over. For travelers around they're going to the take over, guys. It remains it's to done. be seen if robotaxis will become the new norm. These companies are still battling consumer sentiment about everything from the safety of the vehicles to what this means for drivers' jobs. But drivers' jobs are done, bro. Real demand they're done. Real business to grow from what used to be kind of fledgling driverless services. Okay, guys. Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a story. So I had to go pick up um, my my Tesla. I think last month it was, right? Um, and it was a gigantic trip. It was like maybe 300 miles or so. Um, well, not, well, I guess not that gigantic. But we drove. We had to drive one vehicle there, uh, pick up the Tesla, basically, then have the Tesla drive basically all the way back to the Atlanta area. Um, and so the Tesla drove the whole way. If you want to talk about efficiency, okay. Uh, there were times where I, I basically gapped my wife, right, uh, by about 10 miles pretty much on average. That was the average gap from when we stopped to when we were going. Like the like Mad Max mode it has, guys, hurry mode. So it, it'll, it'll get you there legally within the bounds of the speed limit. And it's just like, dude, there was no way she could keep up with a vehicle that was maintaining its speed in the entirety of the time, completely maintaining its speed, um, gauging the traffic patterns to, to put me off and then kind of put me back on uh, to the highway in places so I could kind of get away from traffic at all times here. Um, it was the it was absolutely wild, bro. Um, how much money would states? No, I think, um, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you had an autonomous vehicle 100%, then yeah, you would never be touching the vehicle. Um, but I think you should still probably know how to drive like just in case you ever have to take over because there are times like even right now where I have to like immediately take over because other people doing crazy things. And now um, with the most recent update uh, to specifically the Cybertruck, at least, I don't know if it went out to everything, um, but specifically to the Cybertruck, they added... Um, like where AI now has the ability, it's called Grok. Uh, it has the ability to control the car almost completely now. So I sit in my driveway, right? And I say, hey, take me to Best Buy. Drive, no, no, no. Either, either I can say navigate me to Best Buy or drive me to Best Buy. Or just, oh, you can type it in, things like that, right? But just understand this here, like the AI itself can, can find like the best things to do in your lo local area, um, it immediately brings you to the chargers and starts charging the battery or preconditioning the battery before you even get there. Guys, listen, um, I'm a car guy, all right? I'm absolutely a car guy. I, I love my V8s, bro. I love all of these things here. Just understand this here. But um, I got to the point where I was just like, listen, bro, this thing drives itself, all right? And I know, I can tell you, after being in it, living within it for a little bit now, um, there's no, there's no going back. Once people start actually experiencing this specific technology, there's no going back. There's going to be no going back guys. Um, any type of driver job is, is going to definitely go away. Um, it's, it's definitely cheaper to, let's say, lease a Tesla, buy a Tesla, generally maybe you should lease it, but lease a Tesla and then utilize it for road trips instead of having to like fly places um, or take the train because again, it's just going to drive you all the way there without you ever touching a steering wheel. Guys, this is, so driver fatigue is basically gone. Oh, I can't drive more than 10 hours a day. Well, now you can because you're not driving at all. 
just sitting there. You're just hanging out with, you know, watching Netflix on the on the 22 inch monitor. Guys. guys, do you want to watch movies with me? I never actually thought to like promote it over here, guys. But if you guys do want to watch it, guys, we have hundreds of movies and I mean hundreds of movies that we've reacted to. You guys can come watching with me if you want to, uh, along with, um, you know, many TV shows. Currently, we're working on the show Dexter, uh, along with uh, Vikings. And we have a lot of series that are already completed. But if you guys do want to watch with me, the link is in the description. Everything's available at the second tier. But of course, if that's not your thing, guys, don't worry, right? Listen, like and subscribe.